Hi there, welcome to the channel. Thanks for coming and checking out today's deck tech. Today's deck is something I've built myself. Um, if you watched the stream replay last week, you would have seen the deck. The commander hasn't really got much to do with the deck at all, apart from the five colours. But just in case you haven't seen the commander before, it's Jared Carthalion, the Planeswalker commander from a while back. Um, Wooberg, plus one, you get to make a 3-3 three, three cavalry with trample that's all colours. Minus three, you get to choose up two target creatures, put a load of plus one, plus one counters on them equal to the number of colours it is. And minus six, return target multicolored card from your hand to your graveyard, uh, from your graveyard to your hand. If that card was all colours, draw a card and create two treasure tokens. I'm not playing for any of that. I didn't want to use any of the traditional... You can use any five-colour commander you've got for this deck. I'm just using Jared because it's the first one I spotted when I was building the deck. But the deck itself is a bit of fun. Um, one of the things that happened in the new set was we got a lot of things called courts. And we got a lot of things called virtues. And I really want to see if there's some way to make as many cards in a deck with the courts, the virtues, and monarchy, and then some stuff around the way in which courts work, which is a slight change from the deck you saw, but it's more or less the same deck. So, I've called this the Virtuous Courts. It's a bit of fun. It's a lot of enchantment type stuff. Um, the land base is not cheap. I'm going to be honest about this. We've got Arid Mesa. We've got every single dual land you can think of, and then one of each basic land you can think of. I have all the tri lands in here, the triomes, Fable Passages here, Field of the Dead is here to help us get some blockers, Savannah's in here, Scrublands in here. You know, anything I've got that is in my MTGO collection is in this deck. Now, you can build this deck without some of these lands in it entirely, especially you know Savannah and Scrub Land. Um, so I'm gonna, I might try and put it together in real life because a lot of these cards outside of the um, really expensive OG lands like Scrub Land here, I have in real life. So I might try and put it together. Ramp wise, we had to go a bit heavy. So we got both my suspend cards that I usually have: Mox Tantalite, Soul Talisman, and Soul Ring. Arcane Signet, and then one of each of the new medallions that came back out in Commander Led Masters, and then Chromatic Lantern. That's kind of it. Um, and then it's really a case of, right, I've got a lot of things that are enchantments, I've got a lot of things um, that are enchantments, I've got more enchantments, and I've got a few sorceries and instants. Hmm. But I need to make sure I can get my enchantments into play. So we had to have some things around. I also had to think about the fact that I wanted to ensure that I could get Monarchy quite often. And yeah, it turned into a fun deck to play. It's turned into a fun deck to build. So this is a really indulgent video today for the last one this week. I'll be back on normal Worlds of Eldraine stuff next week. Um, so keep your eyes out for that. But this is my indulgent deck for this week. So <laughs> let's go through it. So starting in the two drops, there's nothing else in one drop apart from Soul Ring. We've got Starfield Mystic and Herald of the Pantheon to cut the cost of our enchantment spells down as much as we can. Tyrant's Choice, because, you know, courts do vote on things and their council does have an idea. And starting with you, each player votes for death or torture. If death gets more votes, each opponent sacrifices a creature. If torture gets more votes or is tied, each opponent loses four life. Nice card, early, well, later in the game, probably. Next one, going over to three drops, so I've covered everything else in two land. Cancel's Judgment, um, starting with you, each player votes for a non-land permanent you don't control. Exile each permanent with the most votes or tied for the most votes. So, you know, get a little bit of removal in. Fall from Vaver comes in because it gives us the monarch ability. Um, ends the battlefield, tap a creature and you become the monarch. And an enchanted creature doesn't untap, do its controller's untap step unless that player is the monarch. So, you know, it does lock down a creature if you can. The first one of the courts is here, the Court of Cunning, so we can start milling everything in sight. Followed by the Court of Garen Brig, um, putting some plus one, plus one counters on some of the creatures that we have. So, you know, we do get some plus one, plus ca counters a little bit easier on our cavities once we get Gerard down and some of the other creatures we've got coming up. You know, Starfield Mystic, Herald of the Pantheon, probably not a bad idea to get some counters on them, help protect them a little bit. Gerard Carthalion True Hair, um, the normal version of our wonderful Planeswalker, is also in the deck. Um, target opponent becomes the Monarch and you can't become the Monarch. If damage will be dealt to Gerard while you're the Monarch, prevent that damage and put that many plus one plus one counters on it. Kind of makes him indestructible to a certain degree, so you know, 
we'll see. Chromatic Lantern I've mentioned. Palace Sentinels, just another way of making us the Monarch. You've got to have some guards for your Virtuous Court. And Replenish, you know, people get hungry when they're doing Courts and being Virtuous, so you don't have to bring everything back. Plus it uh, saves me having to put in Elixir of Immortality. Replenish just lets me bring back all the enchantments that have been killed in my graveyard. First part of the court is Archangel Elspeth, because you always got to have someone there who's going to rule everything. Plus, she does the whole plus one, gives a soldier with life link. So, you know, not going to complain. The court of Ardenvale lets us return a permanent mana value three or less from our graveyard to our hand. And if we're monarch, we get to put it in our battlefield. It's a nice way of making sure that we can keep Starfield herald around, hence why it's here, as well as giving us the monarch when it comes into play. Court of Grace gives us blockers every turn, depending, you know, either 1 1s or 4 4s if we're monarch. Palace Jailer, we become the Monarch when it comes into play and we get to exile a creature that's annoying us. Got to have the Pirate in as well, another way of becoming the Monarch and it can't be blocked by creatures and Monarch controls. Um, plea for Power, a little bit more voting, you know, everyone in the council likes to have a bit of a plea for Power. So we either get time or knowledge, if you get an extra turn with time and you get an extra, with knowledge you get cards. The chances are you'll get the cards, people don't like giving you extra turns in Command, I've decided, but hey ho. Court of Ventress, just copy something that could help us out. Um, you know, Mox, Chromatic, Talisman, whatever it may be. Marchessa's Decree, hence the battlefield, we become the Monarch, and whenever a creature attacks you or Planeswalker you control, that creature's control and loses one life, so it gives you a little bit more protection, especially against swarm things. Thorn of the Black Grows, went to the battlefield, we become the Monarch, and you always have an assassin somewhere in most of the court's programs I've seen. Um... Court of Ambition, we there we go. Um, in the battlefield, you become the monarch at the beginning of your upkeep. Each opponent you loses three life unless they discard a card. Um, if you're the monarch, they just each opponent loses six life unless they discard two cards. Defiler of Flesh is here. I have got all of the horrors in. The defilers are all here in the deck in some form or other just to help us ramp things out a little bit more if we need to pay them at land. Um, sorry, pay the land. Nope, pay life to ramp things out to get our courts down, hence why they're all here. And yeah, occasionally have a little bit of upside. Crimson Fleet Commodore is also here, another pirate, just to make sure we do become the monarch. Likewise, the Ember Wild Captain who protects our shores is here. <laughs> Court of Erin Breath comes in, gives us knights every turn. Um, that's lovely. And then if you're the monarch, it deals X damage to each opponent where X is the number of creatures you control, which is a really nice upside for this one. Defiler of Instincts, the red one. When we cast Red Spell, it deals one damage to any target. Nice. And Jaya also comes in negotiating in our court for us. So yeah, we're keeping the theme of virtuous courts kind of going. The Court of Bounty is here, so we can put lands or creatures from our hand into the battlefield. Um, Garrick's here. He's a wild speaker. Does shout a lot in the court. Helps us also by untapping our lands so we can cast more of our courts and things. Sahili the Gifted um, kind of sits in the middle, keeps everything going, but you know, makes little servos that help. And Queen Marchessa enters the battlefield, become the Monarch, and if an opponent is a Monarch, we get a nice little assassin each turn, so yeah, I can cope with that. Custodia Squire gives us a little bit more voting to do when it comes into play. Um, starting with you, each player votes for an artifact, creature, or an enchantment card in your graveyard. Return each card with the most votes, all tied for the most votes to your hand. Yeah, okay, it's so a 3 3 flyer. Not great, but it's ability, it's not bad. Starfield and Nyx lets us return our enchantments and they become creatures. Hmm, win condition. Defiler of the Faith cast white spells, get soldier tokens. Virtue of Loyalty. One of the reasons I've started putting this deck together. Um, I love this card. Sorry, I'm not going to lie about it. I think it's great. Therefore, it's in the deck. The ability to send it on adventure, instant speed for 2-2 two, two white can absolutely make a mess of people's combat decisions. And then when you play it and start putting plus one, plus one counters on all your creatures, untapping them all, you've got a nice load of blockers. I like it. Really do a lot. Virtue and Knowledge is here to copy the target artifact or triggered ability. Um, we haven't really got anything that enters the battlefield, but yeah, I was being virtuous, so I had to play all the virtues. Defiler of Dreams, um, cast a blue spell, draw a card. Does help with that bit. Mm, it's, no, it doesn't, because it's draw, it's casting, not draw, enter the battlefield. Ignore that. Tevash, Doom of Fools, you got to have the Executioner in the court. This is my Executioner. The Court of Ear, sorry. Um, at the beginning of your upkeep, you do two damage, and if you're a monarch, you do seven damage for any target. Lovely. 
Virtue and Courage and the Court of Ear work very nicely together to do lots and lots of damage. Um, Entourage of Trest is here, as in the pauper deck yesterday, but you know, here it's here because it gives me Monarch again. And Defiler of Vigor, cast a green permanent spell per plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. Another way of doing the extra counters along with Virtue and Loyalty. Archon of Coronation, we become the Monarch, and as long as you're the Monarch, damage doesn't cause you to lose life. Okay then. Elspeth, the Sun's Champion. You always have one champion, and this one helps us keep the board under control. Either by doing the plus one, plus, doing the plus one for the three soldiers tokens, or the minus three to blow everything up. There's power four or more. Um, yeah. Capital Punishment. Each opponent sacrifices a creature for each death vote and discards a card for each taxes vote. So you know, see what people do. And Feast of Succession. Just literally give all the creatures minus four, minus four, and we become the monarch. Nice little sort of like board control side. Virtue of Persistent is probably going to be one of our things that we use to win the game with. Um, at the beginning of your upkeep, put a target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. And this is a little bit more targeted removal and a little bit of life gain if we need it. Skyline Despot is also here. Enter the battlefield, become the Monarch. And at the beginning of your upkeep, if you're the Monarch, you get 5-5 five, five Dragon. <laughs> Virtuous Strength it just doubles return target creature card or land card from our graveyard to our hand. That's fine. We've only got one of each of the basics in here, but you know, even if we can get it out and get them tapped a little bit, um, yeah, it should be okay. It's a shame it's just not, you know, five mana should really be. But if you tap a land for mana, it produces three times as much as dead. That would be a lot more fun at seven mana, but who knows? Maybe there's a reason Wizards did it that way. The final voting card comes at the end here is Exporate, Expor Pirate? I don't know. Can't say that word to save my life. Um, starting with you, each player votes for time or money. For each time vote, take an extra turn. For each money vote, choose a permanent owned by a voter and gain control of it. Yeah, then it gets exiled. So you're going to cast it once, but you're either going to get a couple of permits or a couple of extra turns, one way or the other. Um, and that's it. I've had a lot of fun playing this deck. I've played it a couple of times. I've just randomly joined games this week and played this out, but, you know, Having all the virtues and having all the courts around really does make for a fun game. I'm not saying it's the most competitive thing in the world. It really isn't, but it is fun. And it is something that gives you a nice palate cleanser if you've got a bit too heavy lean to CDH or you know, too many competitive games. You just want something fun to play for a little while. But that's it for today. Um, usually now I go back to the commander, but we all know what the commander is. So I'm just going to leave it here. Um, thank you for watching i hope you've hit the sub button that should be over here somewhere there you go do the arrow point should be here i hope um please help me sub 234 as i record this um was aiming for 500 by the end of the year probably not going to get there so the same for 300 be a bit more realistic and i hope you've enjoyed this kind of random deck tech it's just fun and it's worth playing it there's a list down below and if you want to see me play it there's a link down below as well to my tri 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 twitch stream so you can come and see me play it over there sometime soon okay but thanks for watching today's video i'll be back next week with some more wilds of eldraine commander stuff that's a bit more relevant instead of me just being indulgent and doing this take care thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.